And welcome back once again to our next match here in the 10th Alliance Tournament. Sa I'm very sad to say this is the last match for today that Laz and I will be commentating for you. We'll be switching over to the always excellent Kill2 and Zastro for the second half of the day. But uh, we're going to make the most of the time we have together, and that starts now. We've got uh, Red Overlord versus Revolution today. Red Overlord has brought a ECM kite team with two Tangus, two Kitsunes, and two Dramules. Whereas you have Revolution with the Merlin, two Macarials, two Hawks. And you're going to see the Macarials, much like the Vargars, have extremely long range on their auto cannons just because the Macarial gets a 10% per level buff for uh, fall off. So we're seeing the match has now begun. The Dramules are burning off to try to get some range uh, for the roll team. And we're not seeing. Uh, any success, we're seeing some successful gems on the Macarials from those Kitsunes. It's really going to be a question of whether those Macarials can manage to take down the small stuff before it gets right on top of them, because at that point it's going to be a lot more difficult once they get webbed down by the Dramills. Yep, and you also see the uh, Hawks are most likely once fitting the E War and dampening the Kitsunes, try to keep some of those jams off the Macarials, keep them out of range. Um, as you see, the jams fall off the Macarial and fall onto the Hawks. Yep, we do see one uh, Merlin down and one Kitsune down. One Merlin for the Red Overlord, one Kitsune for uh, Revolution, both going down. That's a good trade for Red Overlord, although they just lost a Hawk as well. Uh, these Hawks and Kitsunes have very good tanks, but they're up against a decent amount of damage from the uh, two Tangus and the Dramules. And the Dram one Jam Dramule for the Red Overlord team just dropped. Um... These Macarials just keeping range. They don't have to deal with too much tracking issues with that range, um, and they're just tearing apart these frigates. What's well, going to be fascinating to see once we see all the frigs die, which is going to be how this is going to start, is um, exactly how the uh, tanks are going to be on the Macarials and the um, uh, Tangus. Both of them are definitely shield tanked, so it'll be interesting to see whether we're dealing with ancillary shield boosters on those ships as well, which I think would be good choices for both of them in this case. Well, you have the Macario, which only has five med slots uh, compared to the Tengu, which has about the same, um, depending on what slot layout you go with. So it's it's definitely a pretty even match when it comes to tank. Uh, the Macario itself probably has a little bit more shield HP um, yeah. just for extra buffer. But doesn't have the resist. Uh, the actual right. tank would be higher than on the Tengu. What we're going to see now, though, what's going to happen? Uh, the uh, Macario of Ren is now taking damage uh, from the Tango missiles, and we're seeing a drop down. I'm not. Yep, we are seeing shield boosts on it. That is likely an ancillary shield booster once again. We're, again, huge amount of use of these. Uh, it's going to be a large ancillary shield booster or extra large, so that's going to be giving you a lot of rep. But it's not. It doesn't look like it's enough. It's still dropping very quickly. It's going to be interesting to see if these guys are actually have, or these guys actually have barrage loaded, or if they're trying to switch ammo to that close range ammo to get DPS on these Tengus. Because um, I don't see any turret effects coming out or, or firing from the carrier or Ren. Up oh, there they are, just starting to shoot again. Yeah, he might have just been changing ammo, which probably would have been a good choice. But I'm surprised his tank is so weak. He's not pulling back a lot of shields, which may indicate a... Wait, I'm seeing an armor rep effect on him? Is, is he dual tanking or the New it's, metagame? I'm not sure. I may have just been seeing that wrong, but uh, hopefully. We'll see. He it's it's starting to pull back some uh, shield now, and one of the Tangus is also active tank that's getting hit. Kalisa in the Tangu is tanking very hard, but once yeah, he runs out of those huge boosters, boost cycles, huge yep, boost so cycles on that Tangu. That is definitely an ancillary booster out of the uh, Tangu. I'm not sure what's going on with the. That tank is on definitely that a dual tank because it had armor yes. damage. It is now back up to full. Yes, he's got an armor rep and a shield rep. Wow! If Red Overlord loses to dual tank Macarials, that'll be embarrassing for them. That's wasn't expecting that at all. <laughs> I, I think is, we can uh, now declare this to be the new flavor of the month for the tournament: dual tank <laughs> materials, uh, dual active tank materials. They're going to be the wave of the future. Uh, it's likely they're going to be what say CCP's next uh, excursion fleet uh, flies with their excellent use of uh, fitting knowledge that they have at the company. Well, Pamdic Legion used to have their material fleet. Are they going to go back to it now with this new uh, new meta? Yes. Well, switching to this, I don't know how we can beat twice the rep. Like, honestly, it's, two is always better than one. As you see, uh, Kalisic finally died in that Tengu. Uh, they're going to lose a lot of DPS. That's going to let this material maybe pull some reps, uh, depending on how much cap he has left after running both those boosters. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to get, once that last Tengu goes down, uh, it's just going to be time before, it, well, the uh, Dremiel kites. 
Yeah, we also see some very interesting things. A couple things uh, to know. One is that the Macarials have smart bombs, which is smart. Excellent work on their part, and they're using them effectively. But also that the drones for uh, the um, Revolution team are webbing drones. You've got uh, light webbing drones uh, that they're using. And uh, I'm honestly, they're one of those uh, module or drones that uh, has some interesting edge uses. They can be useful in some cases, but honestly, most of the time you're better off with something else, I think. Oh, wait, or yeah. no, those dr web drones, where do they, who do they belong to here? No, they, MC. sorry, they belong to Red Overlord, my mistake, or so at least, yeah, Revolution. They, it is Revolution, yes, good. <laughs> you guys don't. You guys don't see this on the battle uh, HUD, uh, but the collection in the material does have a target painter fitted, or is that coming from uh, this Dramiel? I'm, I'm sorry, the Dramiel has a target fit, a target painter fitted to increase the sig of both materials. Which is a smart move when you're pairing it with Tangus. It allows those Tangus to be able to hit Frigs very well, which is why we saw the Merlin and um, Hawks go down so quickly. You seeing Snake Eyes uh, drop about forty percent uh, shield now? It's Looks like he still has a few booster charges left. Um, I don't think it's going to last much longer that with both these materials pounding on him. Uh, the game is, this match pretty much is over uh, once once that Tengu runs out of charges. Yep, I really doubt that that tank is going to take down any uh, materials before it goes down. And so we will be seeing a victory for the dual tanked material team, uh, which is something else. We are going to yeah. see a fair bit of points uh, scored for each side. Um, well, no, if the material stays alive, it won't be too bad. But uh, it'll be enough that Revolution will be in a very strong position going forward. That if they can do a good number of points yep. in their next match, they'll be able to take it. Um, and and Snake Eyes through. just died in the last Tingu. Mm -hmm. And so now we just have the one Dramiel left. It's possible that he may just try to run around the arena and avoid getting uh, killed, or he may be a hero and try to take down the two materials himself. Um, it looks like his choice is the non-heroic way, though. And like we're saying in the last match, these uh, Dramiels, when, when Micro Warp Drive fit, do qu go quite fast. This Dramiel was up to about 4,500 meters a second. Uh, mm -hmm. But it looks like he's kiting back into them. Well, it'll be interesting to see. I don't think there's any way that those materials will be able to catch and kill him unless... Oh, he did. I, I believe he's just trying to get underneath their guns yeah, now. He's, um, he's getting in relatively close. Yeah, he got he got out to range. He went about half shields uh, once those guns were able to track him a little bit better. Um, but now he's leaving again. Mm -hmm. It's. I'm not sure what he's trying to do. Well, even with the range that these materials have and the speed they've got, they're not going to be able to catch a drone meal if he stays out of range. So what he may just be doing is trying to deny those four points to um, the Revolution team, which, again, perfectly valid. Uh, hatred and bitterness are uh, core values here. And uh, so that's something that will allow him to uh, just drop them down a peg for their next uh, match and for their attempt to move through into the knockout rounds. Yep, so far you have 46 points for Revolution and 10 for Red Overlord. A strong showing from the Macarials. Uh, starting out at range like that just, I think, gave them a lot of advantage with those long-range uh, autocannons. Mm -hmm. So um, it looks like we're going to have a while. We've got 2 minutes and 30 seconds left in this match. Um, this is our last match on air for today. So Laz, uh, is there anything that's particularly surprised you seen uh, so far in this first day? I think just not the first day, but the, the whole thing in general, just the amount of work that you guys are all putting into it. I think Ali slept for about five minutes last night, or CCB Loxy slept for about five minutes last night, um, just trying to make sure everything ran smoothly for today. Yes, it's been a huge amount. Every year the tournament's a huge amount of work from the CCP people that uh, really run it. Um, Loxy, uh, Navigator, Sreeg, Soundwave, all of these people, and many, many more, including the ISD volunteers who do great work keeping that website up to date. If you haven't checked the ISD website out for the Alliance Tournament 10, definitely do so. They get the match reports with uh, who killed what, all the points, all the uh, victories and losses up almost instantly after the matches. It's a great, great job that they do. Um, it's it's a huge effort for these people, and they, they it's really a labor of love for them. And the next match coming up is going to be uh, Fearless with Sleeper Social Club, and Zastro and Kill2 will be coming on to commentate for you guys. Uh, yeah, that's going to be an interesting one to watch for sure. Sleeper Social Club is a wormhole corp. Uh, Fearless is a... Uh, What's the best way to describe them? A bitter vet, a bitter vet retirement home, perhaps? Um, a collection <laughs> of uh, Fail Heap Challenge and other posters who uh, all fly under the leadership of uh, the old Larconis Trassler, former uh, CSM and uh, poster extraordinaire. So that'll be yep. a fun one to watch for sure. Nice time sticks down. You see this Dramiel starting to get, take a few more hits. Uh, 
forty percent structure. It's gonna, don't know if they'll be able to get them before the end of the match, but possibly to get those points uh, for evolution, get the, the full uh, fifty points plus the yep. bonus. Having an extra uh, four points in this will definitely help them and it puts them in a much better position, but it's going to be tough. If that dry milk just keeps range, he'll survive easily, even though he took some hits and got really low there. Um, for me, the most surprising thing I've seen so far is uh, the strength that these ECM teams have had. I wasn't expecting these double rook teams to do quite as well as they did, um, but uh, they've been very strong so far. It's still early, but uh, uh, that, I think, has been the big surprise for me for this first morning. I think my favorite team so far was the uh, Hunter Loaded Double Varger team. I, uh, it was new when it first came out, then I think uh, they tried to reproduce it with Babylon 5 uh, right after that, but it didn't work out so well. But yeah. Hunter, Hunter Loaded definitely did a good job. So that is our match. The uh, victory goes to Revolution over Red Overlord. On points, 57.5 points for Revolution, 10 for Red Overlord. And that is going to be our first half of the day completed. Uh, this is Ravy signing off. Yep, it was uh, enjoyed being here today, guys. Can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Uh, yep. And good luck to everyone else in the tournament. Come back for the second half with Zastro and Kill 2.